Well, everybody, we're at uh, the Field of Dreams on the Jerry Hummage Field, where tonight the Sheboygan North Raiders, with a record of eight and ten, and five and eight in conference, take on the fourth-ranked Green Bay Preble Hornets, who uh, come in 15 and two, 11 and two in conference. Uh, joining me is the coach, Chris Wright. Spent uh, 30 years as a baseball coach here at North. Uh, what do you see tonight as a recipe for a North win? Good uh, good question, Marty. Right away, you're going to see uh, Max Wagner for uh, Green Bay Preble on the... He's a junior. He's going to Clemson, not as a pitcher, but as an infielder. And uh, he throws gas. And the key to beating Green Bay Preble and any... Uh, Andy Conard's teams is to get ahead. And uh, so I think it's very important that uh, North comes in with a clean inning here right away and tries to put some pressure on Green Bay Preble. And uh, Green Bay Preble doesn't normally beat themselves, uh, Marty. They're uh, always very strong defensively. Uh, Andy Conard has a bunch of tricks in his back pocket that he can run. and. Uh, I mean, they're, they're legit. They always are legit. Any teams that he's had are, are always very good. North is starting Ben Vorpal, who's a sophomore. Uh, he uh, plays on the JVs, and then they move him up when uh, they want him to pitch on the varsity, and he's pitching tonight. And uh, he's had good success on the season. Uh, he didn't quite get a no-hitter officially. He was part of a no-hitter. I think he went, you said, until the last out, and then they had to bring somebody in because of the pitch count, but uh, he's a good one. Yeah, and he beat Bayport, and Bayport's uh, second, in the, second in the conference. Um, so, you know, we, I knew he was coming up and gonna be a good one. I remember him even coming to, the, to, to some of our stuff when he was an eighth grader, and he's a big kid. Big kid, and uh, you know, one thing about Green Bay Preble, they have struggled to score. So I'm uh, hoping, knock on wood, I'm thinking this my game might be an hour and a half. <laughs> because I was at a couple of the North games last week, and uh, they're arguably their best player, uh, Brent Witter, has really struggled at the bat. He was hitting over 400 uh, coming into the week. Uh, coming into this week, he's down into the 290s, which, you know, is respectable, but when you're hitting 400, you know that uh, something wasn't right for him last week. Uh, Dad said he's hanging in there, but uh, it was a tough week for him. Yeah, and, you know... And North doesn't score a lot of runs no. either, so you got to have your best hitters hit. I was just going to say, seven games this year, uh, North has scored uh, one or zero runs, and even in their game that they've won, they've won some games like scoring two or three um you know it's got to start with 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 harry you know that's for sure at the top harry feinberg is their yeah. leadoff hitter and center fielder he's been slumping too so i guess we'll just kind of wait and see what uh goes on here like i said um preble's struggling at the plate as well they struggle to score runs so i'm looking forward to a good one i'm glad we have this one marty leading off for the preble hornets is uh Connor Shefshik. And uh, Connor steps in hitting 295. Our umpires today are uh, Dan Miller behind the plate and Tim Mathwig on the bases. Those uh, gentlemen are from uh, Fond du Lac. Uh, we've seen uh, Dan over the years, Chris. He's uh, also a basketball official and a good one. Hopefully we'll have a good game behind the plate tonight. That's a super curveball right there. Defense for North, we have uh, over at first base, James Shearer. At second base, Nathan Hendricks. Line drive to right, it uh, falls fair. It's gonna be extra bases. Over chasing it down is Ryan Tross. He gets it back in our Gets it back in in a hurry, but it's a double for uh, Shefshik. Not a good start for the Raiders. Just took that pitch the other way. Yes, Feinberg we mentioned is in uh, center field. In uh, left field is uh, Bennett Becker. And uh, over at uh, third base, uh, Jacob Neese. Brent Witter, of course, at short. Uh, Hunter Steger is the catcher and Ben Vorpal is the pitcher. Go, 
First pitch to the uh, second hitter is Hunter Petsa, Petska. Petska comes in hitting 524, Chris. He's uh, had 11 hits in uh, 21 at bats. All of them singles, however. Yeah, but notice the other part, 36 Who's plate appearances. He draws a lot of walks and hit batsmen. Yeah. Seven hit by pitch, six walks, so that's 13. Uh, that's gotta be close to a school record. <laughs> Seven hit by pitches. You can hear in the background uh, Andy Kunert uh, coaching his uh, base runner about how to uh, take a lead. Be ready for the throw over. Although it was a nice day today, it is a little bit on the windy side here and uh, that's to be expected. It's uh, when you're working a game here, it's different than working a game in your backyard. Well, uh, <laughs> Take that wind off the lake. Talking to Green Bay probably before they came down, they said it's about 12 to 15 degrees. They got him. That was a good throw by Stager. Got it down there in a hurry. Wow, that was a really good throw. Uh, They're saying it's about 12 to 15 degrees warmer in uh, Green Bay than it is here. Shocking. Yeah, really. <laughs> All I could do is run out to uh, Sheboygan Falls or uh, Plymouth. It'd be about 10 degrees warmer there too. Ron Miller giving you that shot along the first base side. We have uh, Richard Bartson. Our director tonight is uh, the leader of the pack, Scott Mailoff. Play by play is Mike Martin. Color is Chris Wright. We got the A team tonight. Well, we shouldn't get rained on like we did a couple weeks ago. And no, that was pretty brutal at the end. Ball straight back. That's seven pitches already. This uh, at bat, Marty. That's uh, a lot. And when you only have a hundred to work with. You don't want to waste that many on one guy. Uh, talking to uh, Steve Goes uh, at one of the games last week, and he said, line drive right up the middle and through for a base hit. But the runner on second. Ball is dropped on the throwdown. Runner on second held at third, even on the throwdown to second. And uh, uh. it's going to be a single. And he advances on the throw to the plate. Boy, and you you just gave away an out there. Yes, you did. They threw back to second, and he was dead to right. Next up is the uh, pitcher, Max Wagner. Wagner steps in, hitting 450. Two-time player of the year, and he's just a junior. Now, you, you do the math. He's pretty good. Freshman and sophomore year. He uh -huh. hits to all parts of the field. He's bigger, stronger he's been. Breaking ball hangs outside. He's got uh, five doubles and uh, two home runs, 18 RBIs, leads the team. And if he gets one up in this wind. I told Vorpal the other day, Chris, he's got the best number in sports. <laughs> That was my football number at North. Yep. We didn't have odd numbers in basketball. It was all even. I was 24. Did I ever tell you this story? You know, we didn't have baseball when I was in high school. And, uh, of course, you know about Pat Matstorf, world yep. record holder in the high jump. He, we graduated together. He loved baseball. If North would have had baseball, he might have been playing baseball instead of doing track. Feinberg comes over and makes the catch. And play it. Oh, man. Oh, boy. 
That's bad. Well, Wagner flies out to uh, center field for a sacrifice fly and an RBI. And then we have a play over at uh, third, and we're waiting to see what the, uh, they're calling them out, and that's the right call. So we're gonna go eight, six, five on the put out at third. Boy, and oh with boy. Uh, nobody on base and two outs, the next hitter is Josh Nicholas, not to be confused with Jack. Josh steps in hitting 380. Well, let me tell you, that was a great relay from Feinberg to Witter to Nazi. Couldn't ask for a better trio for Coach Goes to handle that situation. Potosik uh, actually did a good job of sliding though. Chris trying to avoid the tag. Boy, oh boy. Shouldn't have been, that just should have been an automatic. As a uh, base umpire on something like that, the, ump the, the plate umpire's gotta stay because he's gotta make his, you know, be in position to uh, Right. Call the play at the plate if that were a, th the case. And the tag, correct? Does he have to? Yeah. And the base umpire's got to get himself into position to make that call at third. And it looked like he got hung up uh, too far back towards second base. He needs to move up more, get in position. And I think uh, Dan Miller was like, what in the world are you coming to me for? <laughs> make the call. But as it is, it could have been worse. Preble comes up with one run on two hits. He had no errors and nobody left on base. Max Wagner is going to take the mound and uh, <coughs> see what he can do against the Raiders. I have be throwing about 85. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, last week they saw, I don't know what the kid's name was, but he was a little left-hander and he was throwing junk. He was a crafty left-hander. And then the guy they saw the second game last week was the same type of pitcher very slow and with Norris aggressiveness at the plate they weren't able to uh, slow themselves down if you know what I mean right adjust exactly adjust on the big inning avoided there you have uh, second and third and Max Wagner at the plate and uh, all he gets is a sacrifice fly that's pretty one, good one uh, one run on that inning. Just kind of not unscathed, but done well. There we saw it. Uh, good velocity on that. Wagner's pitching. The catcher is uh, Hunter Petska. One and one is a count. I think that hit the catcher in the shoulder. That's an ouch. ouch. Yeah. And it's in the throwing shoulder. I, I'll tell you, that's uh, for someone you know more taking a bunch of foul balls, those are smarts. Yes. The thing is, you get one, you know, just even from umpiring, you know, you get hit by a ball somewhere, and all of a sudden, you know, it's a week later, and it's starting to heal up. And you take another foul ball in the same spot, and then before you know it, you know, you got a season-long owie. Now we'll Heinberg, see how it does. Uh, yeah, no problem there. Strikeout. And then uh, two to three on the put out. That brings up Brent Witter. This should be the, the test that we have here. Witter and Nazy against Wagner. Yeah. Bryce Miller is over at first base for the Hornets. At second base is uh, Jake Potosik. Yep. Yeah, those have been the kind of at bats Brent has been having the last. Uh, Last week, anyway. Over at uh, third base, we have Zach Rainier 
And playing shortstop today for uh, Green Bay is uh, Josh Nicholas. Preseason ranked number one in state. And part of it's their two pitchers. Who is their other really good pitcher? Uh, uh, Ryan Steinfick. He's only going to Vanderbilt, though. <laughs> and he's a junior. Easy with a hefty swing, but couldn't catch up with it. Out in left field, we have uh, Dominic Mariucci. Mariucci's being, uh, he's not batting today. That pitch on the outside corner for strike three. A quick inning for Wagner. Not many pitches used there. At the end of one, Preble one. North nothing. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. <laughs> the trusses are in the house. <laughs> We're back at uh, the Field of Dreams by on the Jerry Hummett Field. We're starting the second inning. Leading off the inning for uh, Green Bay Preble is uh, Ben Groff. Groff is a junior. You look at these uh, batting stats, Chris, and it's like... Uh, the games that you play in your computer, you know, everybody's hitting hefty averages. Groff is hitting 400. Well, they struggled to score, though, Marty, and they've been on a roll. They lost two games this year, back to back, one to nothing uh, to uh, Ashwaubenon, and uh, they lost the game to Bayport. I was uh, looking in my Baseball America that I got about a week ago, and uh, they come out now as double issues. They only come out every other month. But anyway, they had a section on uh, girls softball, and of course they have a section on high school baseball, and uh, they had their top 20, I believe it is, for uh, high school baseball teams. Wisconsin did not have a representative. A lot of Georgia Southern schools, obviously. Gorpel uh, walks the leadoff hitter, Groff, and that brings up Zach Rainier. Rainier hitting a paltry 250. <laughs> oh, I wish I had a 250 average on <laughs> plate. There's a hit out the center field. Feinberg, cover a lot of ground out there. He's a good one. Makes the catch easily. Next up is the uh, catcher, Hunter Petska. Hunter's hitting an even 300. He got 12 hits and 40 at bats. He does have four doubles, Chris. Hey, did you see who's leading the American League Central? Uh, yes, the Twins. The Aren't they? I was going to give you a hint. Yeah. <laughs> I got my Twins hat on tonight. Jackson Pottis is here tonight. 
believe that Indiana State, but unfortunately. Larry Bird School. Yeah, unfortunately, had arm trouble. Oh, that's that's need Tommy John. Oh, no. Yeah. Drive out to right center field. It's down. Rolls to the wall. And uh, hits the cutoff, man. And they run it in, but uh, Preble is uh, threatening again. They have runners on second and third after that Petska double. And something uh, a little shocking there is uh, held the runner at third. Uh, Nathan Hendricks, see what had to make a long throw there. But again, golden opportunity for the Hornets. Ryan Stefuek, the uh, designated hitter, is up. He's seen limited action, Chris. He's hitting 500, but he's uh, two for four on the year. He's getting an opportunity today. He's uh, DHing for the left fielder, fielder Mariucci. North bringing the infield in. Uh, you had mentioned earlier that uh, what you don't want to do is fall behind Preble. Yes. They don't hurt themselves, Marty, and then you can put a little pressure on them. But uh, right now they're in there, very comfortable. Slow roller, that run is going to score, and then and uh, Forpel doesn't cover first. Yeah, Shear, if he picks it up, he's got an easy out at first. Uh, but he booted it. It'll be in the E3, and uh, as a result, well, probably would have scored anyway. The runner was coming home, but. Uh, miss out on getting an out, and that's important now. The Hornets have runners on first and third, and Bryce Miller is up. And that's a couple drops already. Miller steps in, hitting 290. Takes a bunt, but pulls back and takes a strike. Seem like in other years, Chris, uh, with first and third situations, the uh, teams would be running right away. I haven't seen that much this year. Well, in this situation, I'm not going to say it's not going to happen, but you have the leadoff hitter next. So you don't want to get your runner thrown out. You know, when you're coming up. Of course, that uh, second high throw gets by the first baseman, and that's going to allow the batter Miller to advance to second. Stefuik is out at second. Six to four. Petska scores a run. It's two runs in the inning for uh, Preble. They're now leading three to nothing. There, back to the top. Yeah, Connor Shevchik, who doubled to lead off the ball game, is up again. He had mentioned uh, he's got a real healthy batting average, too. It's over 300 now. He came in at 295. Have you have seen that play where the second baseman comes over and then he breaks back and that's when the runner jumps to a lead and all of a sudden you got your shortstop coming in from yep. the other side, but North didn't have that play called. I like the idea though, fake one throw and then come with it the second time. Try to catch him off guard. Bouncing ball in the hole. Shear's got to come and get it. He does. Yeah. Chef Chick is uh, pretty fast. There was no way you're going to get him. So he's got a two for two day. And uh, that moves the runner Miller over to third. And uh, now we might see some action. Because yeah. uh, leadoff hitter traditionally quite quick. Go guys, let's get out of here. 
Well, not just that, Chris, but you also got your leadoff hitter on first, a fast runner. Yep. <coughs> Tashik is uh, the hitter. He was over 500 when he uh, stepped in the box the first time and he had a hit, so he's uh, really up there. Ball in the dirt. Hunter Steger uh, throwing a chart. Witter came in, but uh, the runner on third did not break, so give the base runner from first a stolen base, and now they got runners on second and third again. Two outs. Toshik was involved in that interesting play at third, Chris, back in the first when we had uh, the catch on the sacrifice fly by Feinberg, and then we had an 8 6 5 put out at third base. And again, you're flirting with disaster, bringing Max Wagner up. These guys played Oshkosh West yesterday, defeated them eight to one. North hasn't played since, what was that, Friday? Friday? Yeah. The two games Friday. They won the first game, I think it was three to two. And uh, in the second game, I believe it was, they threw, uh, Green Bay Southwest threw a real slow breaking ball type pitcher and uh, North had a hard time with him and uh, wound up getting shut out. They lost the second game two to nothing. Bennett Becker, who uh, finished the first game, pitched uh, uh, I think it was one inning or one plus through 20 pitches. So he had 80 for the second game and they used him up. And uh, but they just couldn't get any runs. Well, like I said, this is, uh, this is a tough out right here. Yes. He hit the ball hard out the right center field. Feinberg making a nice catch, but uh, he's got a... He's in the kind of spot he likes to be in, runners on base. Max Wagner. Oh, Mr. Wright. Ball two, two and all oh the count. Corporal's gonna have to come in there now. And Wagner's uh, chomping at the bit now. And that pitch is up high. He may have the green light. Why not? He just. Yeah, three and all. There it is. Ooh, right to Nazy and North gets out of what could be a major jam. Wagner hit a shot right at Jacob Nazy and he made the catch and ended the inning. But Preble came up with two runs on two hits and an error. Three men left. fouls are pretty dumb but if you decide to drink and drive underage you could lose your license and your freedom underage drinking and driving the ultimate party foul okay so we drowned the fire yep. stirred it mm -hmm. drowned it again mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold yeah cool Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Think you can find a partner? <laughs> yeah, back at uh, Field of Dreams. Leading off for uh, the Raiders will be the catcher, 
Hunter Steger. Uh, I don't mean to jinx this, but I have him for uh, Wagner for no balls so far. That could be. <laughs> I was going to say I was talking with uh, Steve Goes uh, last week, and he was saying. There's a double. One right down the line. They have never been able to uh, retire a pitcher on a pitch count. They've all, you know, they're they're free swingers and uh, they don't uh, go deep in the count very often. Coming in to run for North is uh, Devin Lollinsack, number seven. And now batting for uh, North is James Shearer. The reason we're not giving any batting average for the North guys is uh, Coach Goes for the second game in a row said he had a tough day at school and <laughs> couldn't get his act together for us. And school comes first. Chris called me during the day, he says, I got one minute. The game's at the Field of Dreams. Be there or be square. Sher has moved to first base. He's hitting the ball hard. That was a close play at first. Uh, they are missing a guy for over a week, almost two weeks now. Yep. Is uh, Shurg yeah. got hit by a ball and uh, it's, it's had a concussion syndrome. Yeah, he'll be uh, be able to play later, hopefully this week. Ethan, it is Ethan Shurg, right? Yep. Okay. James is having a, Shears having a very quiet, nice year. He was uh, up in the top half of the hitting stats a week ago in the conference. Uh, they haven't been updated. Pitch is just a little bit high. Wagner with the ball. Chris will be interested to know that. Two balls now. Well, get the bullpen busy. <laughs> Stager's on it first. Not much of a threat to run. Well, they got a courtesy runner over there. Well, Lollinsex. Yeah. Not more good. of a threat to run, but in, in this situation, down three to nothing, you're probably not going to be. You are correct. Trying to steal bases. There's a pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Hampshire up. And he draws a walk. Hey, Chris, when you uh, mention he hasn't thrown a ball yet, is that kind of like saying uh, he hasn't missed a free throw all game? Yep. <laughs> That's okay. Ryan Tross is up. Tross is an interesting guy, Chris. He's a sophomore, I think. Yep. And he's got a good arm. He hits the ball well. Uh, in uh, trying to adjust to varsity pitching, though, has been uh, his struggle a little bit. He came into a game last week. He didn't start, but uh, coach got him in at the end. North is down by a run or two, and they had a runner on base, and he squared up on one. He did, I don't want to say to the wall, but I mean, he hit it out there in left center field, and the left fielder, I believe it was, had to make a heck of a catch. Otherwise, it would have been a tie ball game, and he might have been on second or third. Yeah, he is, he's the future. We build around him being a sophomore. And of course, the difference is now he's facing Wagner. That's a little different than facing yeah. that uh, other guy. Yeah. He's a very nice kid, too. Had a chance to talk to him the other day. He did get a hit with the uh, runners on second and third, and uh, they had the infield in. Hit like a high bouncer over the mound and uh, scooted through uh, into center field. Hey, there's a break. Which goes off the uh, glove of the Preble catcher, moves the runners up in that pass ball. After Petska. Not able to come up with that pitch. He's got to put the ball in play here. Got to get these runs in. Get back in this ball game here. Don't get opportunities like this. 
but he doesn't. Breaking pitch by Wagner. Shows a little gumption there, Chris. Throw a breaking ball well, in that situation. Yeah. Do you have, do you have three balls there. on him? Yep. Two. Two balls, okay. Bennett Becker up next. You mentioned that uh, last week Bennett pitched in both games of the doubleheader on Friday. Ben is playing out in left field today. Really good athlete. Can play a lot of positions. Turns on one there, hits it out to left field. Left fielder coming in, drops in, and North is on the board. Lollinsack scoring on the base hit by Becker. Got it in on his hands, Marty. And yeah, he did it out there. Yeah, I was gonna say he didn't square up on it real good, but uh, hey, it worked. Shearer, because of the short hit to the outfield, could not advance to a third base. So now North has runners with one out on first and second. Owen Dominguez. Up. Owen Dominguez is up right. Owen is normally uh, an infielder, middle infielder, second or short. DHing tonight. He DHed last week too in one of the games, maybe a couple of the games. That's Hits well it hit. hard to right. Right fielder drifts back, makes the catch. And the ball hit the runner. And also advancing, smart base running by Becker. I'm thinking, Chris, I'm not sure that uh, Shear could have advanced to third, but boy, on that hit by uh, that hit by Becker would have been nice to have him advance one base. He would have scored on that. But as it is, he could only advance to... Uh, yeah. no, I had him on the bag in time to catch. I had a straight line at it. Now, the situation now is. Uh, need a clutch hit. You need a clutch hit, is right. Nathan Hendricks is up. Hendricks is the second baseman. Does a lot of pitching for the Raiders when he's not at second, but it's two outs with runners on second and third and a chance to tie it up. Wagner bringing the heat that time, but it was outside. You see it, Preble three, North one. We're in the bottom of the second. Out, 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 out. Get out of me. Ball uh, called straight back. What's nice to see here, Marty, is you're getting contribution from the bottom of your order. That's important. You know, you got, uh, these guys are challenging hey, Wagner. What they need. But Norse needs to get some contributions from the top of the order. Well, I'm just saying <laughs> that's, you know. Hey, just, uh, they all, they're all in the lineup. Yep. So uh, it's not like they've been overmatched by uh, Wagner so far. Ooh, breaking ball right in there. Called third strike, and that ends the inning for North. But after two complete innings of play, Preble three, North one. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. talk about how with technology you can make amazing worlds. Come with me. My team and I groomed the Halo world to life. Is that you? That is me. I wasn't a math genius and I knew nothing about coding. But you guys do. You guys have the power to change things. I want your job. I want you to have my job. 
We're back at the Field of Dreams and North has made a pitching change. Nathan Hendricks is now pitching. And uh, Brian, pardon me, Bennett Becker has moved from left field to uh, second base. And I didn't catch. I think Ethan Brooks is playing left and I think they're gonna keep the DH. Okay. You know, Brooks played a lot of left field last uh, last week. That was really, you know, a lot of bad luck there for Vorpal. You know, we had the air, uh, two airs in the inning. Uh, yes, he had the walk, but you know, I didn't think he did a bad job out there pitching. Too bad he had, a, you know, he a couple okay. walks. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And, uh, I agree with everything you said, he deserved better. Yep. On the first inning, with a drop ball at second base, which could have gotten the first runner, you know, could have yeah. avoided a runner out. I mean, so lots of different things that uh, didn't work well for him. The uh, shortstop, Josh Nicholas, is uh, up for uh, Preble. And Hendricks's first pitch is outside. When I was driving over, Chris, my uh, car thermometer said 64. Uh, I did bring my uh, shell, lacrosse shell to put on, and I'm glad I brought it along because it's a little bit on the chilly side. Although no rain, that's an important factor. And we are we have partly cloudy skies, getting the sun once in a while. There's a rocket. Yeah, hanging curveball that time, and uh, Nicholas did what all hitters do to hang in curveballs. Hit at the center for a base hit. That brings up uh, the right fielder, Groff. Ben Groff hitting 400. When he uh, came up his first time and he uh, drew a walk and scored, so he's still hitting 400. Hendricks is a senior. He's experienced. One uh, pitch the state championship of Legion last summer. Beat a very good Eau Claire team. A very good Eau Claire team. That was a great run by uh, Sheboygan Legion last year. Yep. The thing is, when you struggle through most of the year and then you get on one of those streaks where you start to play well, uh, it's really neat for a team because they see what they're capable of. Well, they had to beat this, basically this Preble team kind of, the Shockers to, you know, mm -hmm. in Legion, which was a handful to, just to, to uh, get to the state tournament. Then you got to state and no one really gave them much of a chance and then they they won that, and then they got to nationals and or the regional, excuse me, and beat a couple, beat a team there too, <laughs> from uh, I think a state champion of uh, Michigan. Yeah, it's very cool. Now, does uh, who coaches that Preble Legion team? Andy does. <laughs> Same guy that's here. And Steve goes, of course, coaches uh, Sheboygan's Legion. Yep, which varsity. is a combination of. It will be interesting this year. It'll be at least north and south players, but it'll be interesting to see who else comes to play. Get some of the uh, Lutheran High kids or maybe somebody from out in the county like Sheboygan Falls or Plymouth. Yeah, it'll be interesting what those programs, I don't know what they're doing right now. But, uh, uh, did I was here when uh, they beat, uh, when they played Plymouth. Plymouth won by the 10 run rule, by the yep. way. And that was uh, not a very good performance by the readers. But anyway, my, my point was going to be Plymouth has a catcher that is extremely good, and he's got a great arm, and uh, I could see him coming to Sheboygan to play Legion baseball yeah, and, and just start what Plymouth is going to do with. Uh, I know. Uh, talk with Rick Meyer, who was just recently inducted into the uh, Sheboygan County Baseball Association Hall Hall of Fame. He's the manager GM for the Plymouth Flames, and uh, he's worried about losing kids that might have played for him to the Legion program. 
And uh, to the point, they're, they're hurting for players. Is, and uh, the program might actually stop. So another ball, probably threatening again. They have the leadoff hitters, first number one and number two batters uh, on base. First and second, nobody out. Ball one to uh, Rainier. And pitch bouncing in, good stop by Steger. Throw down. Boy, oh boy, they almost had him, Chris. Yep. Steger not afraid to throw the ball around a little bit. Well, they're trying to bunt here, but he can't seem to throw a strike. That's a beauty. Steger picks it up, rifles one to first, and the runner is going to score on the bunt. Coach Conar does not like that play, but they score anyways. A pretty good base running by Josh Nicholas. And Shear that time should have just run at the runner. Instead of throwing and across. To the, to the base, that's... You know, you always want to throw it to the lead base in that situation. Hefty swing by uh, Hunter Petska, the uh, Green Bay catcher. He doubled back in the second inning. We're in the third, Preble on top, four to one. So how do we get that guy to score from uh, third? It's not an RBI on the sacrifice. It's not a stolen base. Fielder's choice. Fielder's choice, yeah. Which rides outside. Get a run, you wanna shut down Preble and that wasn't the case. By North here. Yeah, good point. Pitch there. That's go stepping in the bucket on that curveball. Didn't have much of a chance. This brings up the uh, number eight hitter, Sefuek, the DH. He uh, reached on an error by Shurg in the second. How many pitches did uh, uh, Vorpal throw? 39 I had. 39 in two innings. <coughs> I thought it was a good selection to start him because he's been pitching well. Yep. Hendricks working fast. Ball hit high to center field and deep. Feinberg dropping back and uh, makes the easy catch. At the end of two and a half, Preble on top, four to one. Arthritis, it can be a painful reminder of all the things you can't do. Let's get a grip on arthritis. You can help by donating at arthritis.org. Some chores you dread. You do them. But that doesn't mean you're happy about it. And there's registering with the Selective Service. If you're a young man turning 18, the law says you have to register. It'll keep you eligible for college loans, government jobs, and training, and it only takes two minutes, which makes it not only your most important chore, but the easiest. When you turn 18, register at sss.gov or the local post office. Yeah. 
Getting ready to start the bottom of the third inning. Max Wagner is still on for uh, Preble. And some totals for uh, Vorpal, Chris. He went two innings, gave up four hits, three runs, walked two, no strikeouts. Leading off the third will be the leadoff hitter, Harry Feinberg. Feinberg uh, struck out his first time up. to bring was my schedule for North. I think they, they've, their next game is at home on Thursday. I don't recall who it's against. It's a conference game. A good guess would be a Green Bay school. I think it's Mantua. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think it's Mantua. <laughs> I know next week they got to play at Preble. They got South yet. They're getting down to the end of the year. When does the conference season end? Is it in June? No, no. Tournaments in the tournaments in the end of May. Okay. So and uh, the uh, pairings for that is yet to be determined. Correct. I know softball is this week. Baseball will be next week. Feinberg fouls it at home plate, hanging in there. Notes on Feinberg is he's solid on defense, the good arm. He's been squaring the ball up more, but that was a couple weeks ago when we did our uh, other TV game. He was in a slump, I will have to say. He's in a slump. Yeah, he swings at a bad pitch in the, in the dirt again. That was basically a rewrite or a replay of uh, his uh, first at bat where he swung at a pitch in the dirt and missed and then the catcher had to throw him out at first. And he gets down the line. He is a fast runner. He covers a lot of ground in center. But uh, not faster than Petska's arm, that's for sure. Brent Witter fouled out to the first baseman his first time up. Out. And, uh, swinging at the first pitch, fouled it back. That shot being brought to you by Richard Bartson. Ball is hit deep to right, but Groff is there and makes the catch. Hey, got two down here, no doubles. Brings up Jacob Nasey. Nice, pardon me, Jacob Nice. The breaking ball is right there on the knees. Uh, we have a game, a TV game next Tuesday. It's the North South. Uh, Chris will be here. He's going to get a real partner for that game. <laughs> you know what you should do? You should line up seven guys and they each get an inning. <laughs> I think I, I have a job too, Marty. <laughs> it's just times it's tough to get roll one guy. Out, roll out the ball and start making calls. <laughs> Jim's a, <laughs> Chris is a gym teacher over at the Leadership Academy. Oh, and next week too, you will have sports day for fifth graders. Yeah, fifth grade on Thursday, fifth grade sports day. You're That's the, always a good time. announcer. Yeah. Still looking for a job that I could do. Oh, there's a nice liner, but right at the second baseman. Jacob Pet 
Petsek, and uh, he makes a catch, and uh, Nice is robbed. At the end of three complete, Preble on top, four to one. Mom and Dad used to argue about everything, especially about Dad's drinking. My family went from totally crazy to quiet, calm, and even peaceful when Mom started going to Al-Anon family groups. I wanted a better relationship with Dad, so I asked Mom if she would take me to her Al-Anon meetings or to Alateen. I'm sure glad I did. If someone's drinking troubling you, you might be surprised at what you can learn in an Al-Anon or Alateen family group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-ALANON or go to Alan. them, sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire, and that could be scary. Ah, Only you can prevent wildfires. Back at uh, the Field of Dreams. Preble batting here in the top of the fourth. Number nine hitter, Bryce Miller, first baseman, is up. Another hanging, breaking ball. It's hit down the line, but it does fall in foul ground. Miller will uh, get another chance. All right, Chris, I'd like you to look at my scorebook. This first inning, that's easy enough. That was an earned run and the sack fly. But in the second inning, how many of those two runs would you say are earned? Groff walked, then we had a fly out, and then we had the double by Petska, put runners on second and third. And then there was that grounder to Schurg that he booted. But the run would have scored anyway, so I say that should be an earned run. But there would have been a third out. On that would have only been the second out. But this one here would have been the third out. So, so the second run that scored would be unearned. Correct. So Vorpal gave up three runs. Two of those were earned, correct? Yep. Two and two is count. Miller takes that pitch and again hits it down the first base line in foul territory, but Schurg able to navigate the uh, line. Sure. James Shear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Schurg is hurt. <laughs> <laughs> able to navigate that uh, foul ball and make the catch. Thank you. And that brings up Shevchik. Shevchik with a double and scored a run in the first, and he uh, singled and stole a base in the second. A breaking pitch uh, in there for a strike. And a beauty. Pitch fall back. You get a good shot. Nathan Hendricks, nice stop by uh, Nice. And he's got a gun at third. Throws the base runner out by a half a step. 
Surprising we don't see Nice do any pitching, Chris, with that arm. I had him pitch a little bit. Couldn't find the strike zone. <laughs> he could throw hard, but he couldn't always throw a strike. Jake Potasek is up. If uh, Nathan Hendricks can uh, retire this Preble batter, it'll be the first one, two, three inning for the Hornets. Well, we solved one problem. They had the leadoff hitter on three consecutive innings. That ended here in the fourth. There you go. You know, speaking of leadoff hitters getting on, how many times did the Cubs walk the leadoff hitter for the for the Brewers and uh, they just couldn't get them in? Right. Then that 18, was it the 18 inning game? No, nobody was getting on that game. 15 inning against the Cubs? Yeah, that was a 15 inning, but the week before they had an 18 inning game. Yep. Not a one, two, three inning. And that brings up Max Wagner. Wagner hit a scalding line drive right at uh, Jacob Nies, who made the catch with the bases loaded and two outs. Runner might be going here. I thought you brought up, brought up a really good point. When North scored in their half of the second, made it three to one, it was really important to keep uh, Preble from scoring and they couldn't do it. There was a shot hit out to uh, left field. And, and that hard. ball is out of here. A home run. Brooks went to the wall, and all he could do is watch it sail out. Walks lead to runs. Scott, maybe you can get a replay of that. You mentioned Wagner uh, being a good hitter and had two home runs coming in. He leads the club in home runs with three. He's an all-stater. The club total is three. <laughs> there we go. Oh, we just caught it at the end. Brooks looking over the fence. It got out in a hurry, Chris. Well, that's what I was afraid of. Nice play. scoop by uh, Nice, and he throws across for the out, but not before Preble comes up with two more runs on a Max Wagner two-run homer. I'm not your charity case. I am not your excuse to buy a new dress for the annual fundraiser. I am not the poster child for your big donation. I am out of debt and in my own home. I am off opioids. I'm graduating on time and on my way to a great job. I am. I am. We are. We are. We are. What it means to live united. Hunter Steger is going to lead off the uh, bottom of the fourth for North. He uh, doubled down the uh, right field line. Uh, pardon me, down the left field line. It's last time up. Hunter shows a good eye there, taking that pitch uh, low and away. On deck is uh, James Shearer. Another sophomore. I didn't realize that. Yep. His sister is sitting just off to your left, slouching in the Packer chair. 
She was the gal with the uh, sweater with all the lights at Christmas time at that North game. Oh. On the dance <laughs> team. Yep. Amar I think her first name is Amari. Get a good shot of Max Wagner. Steger hanging in there. Kind of hard to tell from uh, Ron's shot here through the fence, but uh, it's an artificial turf here at uh, Jerry Hummage Field. Put it in last uh, summer and uh, what an improvement over the, uh, you know, regular grass and dirt that was in here. Oh, yeah. Well, pitch looked a little low, but uh, Dan Miller thought it was good enough. The strikeout for uh, Wagner, he has... Uh, Six strikeouts so far in four innings. One and one to count to James Shearer. Garrett Rivest in that shot. Garrett, first base coach for the Raiders. He's a good guy. Really good guy. Coaches Legion in the summer as well. JVs. And, uh, are we doing Legion now again? Yeah. Yeah. Are, we, are we able to announce something to the world or should I keep it under my hat? <laughs> Chris has two children, <laughs> and they are both getting married this summer. Yeah. It's going to be a busy summer for you. Yep. Nice piece of hitting. And through. Base hit. Sheeran, two times in the ball game. He walked back in the second, and now he's got a single in the fourth. Brings up Ryan Tross. Mentioned Tross, a sophomore. He struck out his first time up, but uh, he's a good player. Leading six to one. He's more concerned about getting out than the base runners. But he does have such a quick move, he could get an easy out that way. Yeah, you're right there. Wagner with a good pitch at the knees on the inside corner. Tross looking down to uh, Coach Goes. See what he wants him to do. Back, back, back. Back. It's an advantage to have a left-handed first baseman, Chris, because they catch that throw and you don't have to reach across their body to get the glove down by the base. Tross swung right through that fastball. Go better. Go now. Bouncing ball foul. Coach Steve goes on a boot at third base. Well, third base coaching box. <laughs> Another quick throw to first, and that was close. Sure, taking a little shorter lead that time, Chris. Where that? That would hurt. <laughs> yeah, really. 
You were an 85 <laughs> mile an hour fastball. <laughs> he's a little, he's, you don't see many kids that throw like this. Another fastball right by Tross. Seven Ks on the game. Bennett Becker up. Becker uh, singled in a run his last time up. Hit that ball to left. Dropped in. Robin and Tommy tying the knot. Seems just like yesterday they were pulling sticks at <laughs> Valrath Park while we were playing tennis. Yep. Tommy was given golf lessons. <laughs> <laughs> Becker right on that one, folded straight back. It's hard to believe it's been a few years since Tommy played already. My gosh, you know, six years now? <laughs> That's a long time. That is a long time. Gonna getting a teaching job in Algoma, was it? Well, he's tried there. He's gonna be at Mantuck next week. He'd okay. love to stay in Sheboygan. Yeah, that'd be great. And he likes to coach. And well, striking out the side, Max Wagner. At the end of four, six to one treble. You're a busy man when you turn 18. But with all you've got going on, don't forget to register with Selective Service. It's the law. It only takes about two minutes to register at sss.gov. And you can do it without even looking up from your phone, just like that. When you turn 18, register at sss.gov. With Mother's Finances, I wish we had discussed this sooner. It's difficult making decisions for mom. With dad gone, a lot has changed. Seeing my parents age, I worry about their financial decisions. As we age, our ability to make good financial choices decreases. Start the conversation today and plan for the future. Financial resources and tools are available at smartaboutmoney.org, a non-commercial organization focused on your financial success. <laughs> Back at the Field of Dreams on Jerry Hummich Field where uh, Preble leads it six to one. Chris mentioned early in the ball game that Preble is having some trouble scoring runs and uh, we actually saw a little bit of that in the second and third innings when they had opportunities to put crooked numbers on the board and they weren't able to do it. But uh, Max Wagner changed all that in the fourth inning with a two run homer. Well, they've scored in every inning tonight, Marty. And seem to be catching on to their hitting as the weather gets warmer, as should be the case for most yeah, teams. Yeah, that's usually what happens. Ball hit hard, but fouled by uh, Groff. Mentioned uh, Ben Groff was uh, hitting an even 400 when he came in to the game, and uh, he's got two walks, so he's still hitting an even 400. Takes that one to uh, right. And Becker is right there to make the catch on the outfield grass. And that'll take care of that 400 average. That's right. <laughs> More of a pop-up that carried to the outfield than a fly ball that was pushed back in. Zach Grenier is up. He uh, flew out the center and uh, 
Get a sacrifice bunt. Game is moving along pretty well. We're in the fifth. Ball is followed straight back. He had a good shot at Nathan Hendricks. Ball ticks, Steger makes the catch, and that's strike three. Second strikeout by North pitchers in the ball game. Hunter both Petska. Both by Nathan. Pardon me? Both by Nathan, too. Yeah, you're right, both by Nathan. Well, Chris, the last time we had this situation, I said something and they wound up scoring two runs, so I'm not gonna say that they got the first two hitters. Well, North Pitching's given up four walks and four innings, so it's gotta, that always hurts. Two of those runs have scored. Hendricks paints the outside corner with that break and pitch, that was a dandy. Tried to do that again. And it's a fly ball to deep left and Ethan Brooks making the catch and it's a one, two, three inning for the Raiders at the end of four and a half. Trouble on top, six to one. The police called after midnight when they caught our son at a drinking party. It was a real wake up call. A policeman suggested we try al on family groups I didn't want to go to a meeting, but I'm glad I did. Are you troubled by someone else's drinking? You might be surprised at what you could learn in an al family group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-AL-ANON or go to al .org. Four out of five women with ovarian cancer will experience recurrence. It's often incurable. Until recently, following chemotherapy, women with recurrent ovarian cancer had to simply watch and wait for their disease to come back. Well, we say, not on my watch. Not on my watch. With maintenance therapies, women can delay recurrence. Awareness of your choices empowers you. Take an informed and active role. Visit notonmywatch.com. Getting ready to start the bottom of the fifth inning. Uh, it's for North, it's going to be uh, Owen Dominguez, the DH and number eight hitter, and then it'll be Nathan Hendricks, the pitcher. And we go to the top with uh, Harry Feinberg. Max Wagner has uh, pretty much had it his way, Chris. He's uh, been, uh, just like you said at the top, really good. Yeah. I have him at 64 pitches, Marty, but that's not official. Not official. We'll have to talk to uh, Mr. Morgan when he walks by, the uh, Preble assistant coach. Spent my day Monday over at uh, Sheridan, working in uh, Mrs. Guerin's first grade room. Interesting. Rounder to short, play is made. Interesting over there how they do it, Chris. They uh, have a morning group and an afternoon group. And uh, in my room, I teach the same thing in the morning, and then the new group comes in in the afternoon. We teach the same thing in the afternoon. And uh, the week before last, or last week it was actually, I was in Mrs. Driscoll's room, part of that same team. So kids remembered me. Hey, Mr. Mean, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> up, up, get out coming back. Get out. Look out, Chris. Look out. Look out. Nice play made by Petska. And Hendricks is out. Those are not easy, Chris. No. Petska made it look easy, but uh, it's not. And uh, what makes it hard? Well, the ball's gonna come back at you, and you know, first thing, of course, you're backpedaling too, which is always difficult, yeah. and the wind. 
So here you get uh, not only the backspin, but also the wind, the double whammy. Yeah. We practice those in the gym. How can you hit them? <laughs> <laughs> I had to practice them when I was a baseball coach, but I couldn't hit them. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Don't you watch some of those guys and hitting fungos and that? And, uh, it's an art. It's an art form. Feinberg uh, got wood on the ball, but uh, couldn't come up with the base hit. It's a grounder to second base. And uh, we're through five complete. Preble still on top. Nothing hurts my mom, but she showed anyway. We were trained to help others, but there's strength in finding help for yourself too. We're in this together. Even the toughest of us might not know where to go to get a little support. The VA Women Veterans Call Center connects veterans with personalized information on VA services that can make a difference. Call 1-855-VA-WOMEN or visit www.womenshealth.va.com. We've all seen that moment in movie credits that says no animals were harmed in the making of this film. As a film director, I rely on the eight decades of experience American Humane brings to safeguarding animals on set. They consult on scripts, advise on locations, training, veterinary care, and so much more. As a director, nothing is more important than making sure everyone is safe, and that includes the animals on set as well. And thanks to the passionate people of American Humane, we can. Richard Bartson giving you that shot of Nathan Hendricks. It's done warming up to uh, start the sixth inning. How many pitches for Wagner? Thank you. I have 71. I love it when you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I was surprised I was <laughs> that close. <laughs> that is pretty good, actually. Maybe they were wrong. There you go. Coach Morgan, he's got 71. <laughs> Stafuik, the DH is up. He reached on an air and flew out the center. He's 0 for 2 in the ball game. Hendricks uh, seems to be finding his groove, Chris. Yep. And a strikeout. Tag by Steger, it brings up Bryce Miller. Miller 0 for 2. Hendricks uh, in a groove, Chris. He's uh, retired the last five batters that he's faced. Uh, the last batter to reach was uh, Wagner on that two run homer. Ball hit hard. The deep center field. Feinberg got a good break on it. It's a routine catch. And we're back to the top. Chef Schick is up. He's uh, two for three in the ball game. Very fast runner. He also plays center field. It's hard to shine defensively when your pitcher is striking everybody out. It is. And they got, they're, they're loaded with pitching. No doubt about it. Uh, you got a nice round of applause from the Preble players, Chris. Uh, Andy Kunert, and you were talking in the dugout, and he turned around, said to his boys, this is Chris Wright. 30 years head coach at North, and uh, the boys clap for you. I thought that was very nice. Yep. I miss, miss the game. Well, that's why we do these TV games. It'd be nice if we could do a few more baseball, but uh, Ryan Tross on a nice catch out well, in right field. Weather's always not very cooperative. <laughs> yeah, really. 
all those teams that played summer ball all those years are finding that out. Yep. After five and a half, Preble's still on top. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. But now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome, we need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. Hey, we missed you at the game last week. Is everything all right? Hey, uh, just haven't been feeling like me lately. You know I'm here for you, right? Acting is one thing. Talking about suicide in real life is another. In the military, you take challenges head on. And now it's your turn to do the same for our veterans. Be there. Learn how you can start the conversation at BeThereForVeterans.com. Well, if North is going to do anything, Chris, this would be the <laughs> inning. They got two, three, and four up. I was up. just thinking the same thoughts, Marty. They got to they got to get uh, they want a chance at this one. They got to make some hay now with their horses here. Got a dent get a dent into Wagner here somehow some way. Breaking ball bounce to short third baseman cut in front and I think that threw off the shortstop and uh, we're going to mark it down as a base hit. Would have been a tough play. Rainier cut in front of Nicholas, and I think that threw off Nicholas's uh, sight of the ball. Nice up next. Jacob has shined more uh, in the field than at the bat. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Hunter Steger is on deck. He too up there in the uh, leaders of the league in hitting. Look at uh, Witter over at first base. He had a pretty conservative lead over there, which uh, is probably a good thing. It's another step or two off in this pitch. See, the second baseman is shading towards uh, second base. Now he moves over a little bit. Pitch on the inside corner is called a strike. One ball and two strikes on Jacob. Wagner came with the fastball, but uh, Nice was able to get a piece. Hey, Chris, when you were uh, coaching, did uh, you call the pitches or one nope. of your coaches call the pitches? Nope. Always had the catcher do it. We basically had the catcher unless we wanted certain certain plays or certain pitches that we would call something. I know Coach Goes calls, he and Schmitty call all the pitches now. Um, we had uh, our catchers do it unless, you know, we saw something or knew something or. One of my years, I, uh, he falls it back, tried doing that calling the pitches and uh, I think I had a senior catcher and, and he had always called his own game prior to that and uh, he didn't care for it too much and uh, you know I wasn't real enamored with it it's not like I had to call the pitches so we turned back to him and I think there is uh, an advantage to that in that uh, the catcher knows what the catcher ha what the pitcher has and uh, Andy Coonert coming out. I wonder if Wagner's done. Looks like they're making some uh, position changes. He wanted to get through the first two. Switch Josh and Jake. Josh and Jake, he moved the second baseman to uh, short, and the shortstop to second base. 
Josh Nicholas moves to second. Jake no, Betusik. <coughs> Wagner goes to short, I believe. No, Wagner's still on the mound. He moved, he switched to second baseman in the shortstop, I believe. Oh, no, you're Wagner. right. Oh, there he's got him. Wow. Got him right on the back as he was landing on the base and uh, umpire called him out. We had a couple of plays that were close early, early in the game. It's two and two on the batter. Oh, no, I take that back. New That's batter. the first pitch. Yep. Umpire put two fingers out in both hands. Thought it was two and two, but there were two outs. Uh, what looked like a promising start, Chris. Base hit is uh, nobody on and two outs. Get out of me. Well, I'm glad we did this game, Marty. I know uh, the score isn't what we'd like. Right, but uh, this is, you know, at the beginning of the year, if North was gonna compete for a, a title, this is the game and home game against Preble that you, you wanna win. Two balls, one strike. And what's hard to believe is Max Wagner's their number two. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's pretty well for them. Oh, I had him. I must have missed something there. I had, two uh, balls and two strikes. Out. Richard Bartson giving you that shot. Ron Miller right in front of us behind home plate. Giving you that shot. Scott Mailoff is our director tonight. Scott doing a bang up job. And a 6 3 put out ends the inning after six complete. And all preble, six to one. change the world. Yeah, you. Getting that college education. I dare you to be somebody important. Like be a teacher. Or a reality TV star. I dare you to stand up here. To call the shots. To be a role model. An inspiration. An innovator. To be a teacher. Think you can change my life? Make me excited about science like you. Have a career that really means something? Then do it. I dare you. Yeah, we're back at uh, the Field of Dreams, getting ready to uh, start the seventh inning. And uh, Chris, you were mentioning uh, when we, well actually you made up the schedule this year for the baseball, and uh, you had mentioned that uh, you wanted to get this game on the schedule because uh, oh, Preble's a good team, and it, yep. like you said, it was an important game for North if they're challenging for the conference. Yep. Preble, yeah. Preble leads the league by, uh, they have one less loss than uh, De Pere and Bayport. So this is a very important win and for I them. I know Plymouth, or Plymouth, why am I, I looked at Plymouth here. I know uh, next Tuesday will be 
DePierre and Preble will be playing. That'll be basically the last, you know, it's, you can't guarantee anything, but the last yeah. tough hurdle for Preble to, to win the league. Jake Potosik leading off for the Hornets. As we mentioned, when uh, tournaments start, North will not be playing the Green Bay schools no, totally, they, they, you know, unless yep. they reach state. Their uh, they're sectional, we'll talk much more about that next week, will be. That ball bounced and hit Potosik in the foot. He didn't even move. And uh, it's hard to tell because he didn't uh, show any pain or anything. Uh, basically, North and uh, pinch running for uh, Preble is uh, Anthony Varia. I got a feeling this is going to be a re-entry for the uh, for the shortstop uh, Patashik. Uh, by the way, Chris, uh, the reason that they moved the second baseman over to short and the shortstop over to second was because the shortstop, uh, Nicholas, had a sore arm. He had pitched earlier in the week. And, yeah, yesterday. Uh, right. And uh, there was a play last half inning where he had to throw a guy out at first, and he did not look real comfortable throwing. So they made that switch. Here we go. Last time Wagner was up, he deposited. Yes. All right, they get the force at second on a nice play by uh, Jacob Neese. But uh, Wagner a little too fast, beat the relay throw. So he's gonna be on it first now. Mentioned uh, <coughs> sectional is basically uh, the Oshkosh schools. For North. Yep, North and South. You got Manitowoc, you got Fond du Lac. Then you have schools like uh, Cedarburg, Homestead, West Bend East, West Bend West, and Slinger. Okay. Slinger and the West Bends are So it there. extends more south. <laughs> yes, it's basically partially North Shore teams. Uh, Slinger, the leader in that league is a Whitefish Bay, followed by Slinger, and then the two West Bends, which are been perennial powers. In your estimation, would you say North stands a better chance in that section yes. than they would be moving up into the Green Bay area? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they, I would say yes over the years. The Oshkoshes are down. They've been up. Witter. Makes a nice play, steps on the bag and throws the first for a 6-3 double play. And we head to the bottom of the seventh. And uh, Nathan Hendricks, he did a great job coming in, Chris. He pitched five innings. Five innings, two hits. One of them a big fly. The... Uh, the Oshkosh is, like I said before, are down a little bit this year. They've been way up, and uh, they're down. Fond du Lac is down this year. So I can see North. They're gonna have to win some ball games, but I can see them maybe a six, seven seed. Are you good, Max? I have Wagner at 85 pitches, so. He's in pretty good shape. Yep. Well, Hendricks's line, he pitched five innings, gave up two hits, three runs, all earned. He walked two and struck out three. Wagner is, uh, there's 85 pitches, he's got 15 left. He's uh, struck out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine so far. North has got uh, James Shear, who's uh, walked and singled, Ryan Truss, and then uh, Bennett Becker. And out of that threesome, North has a couple of hits, which uh, they only have four, so that's not too bad. Perfect. 
If uh, North were to put a couple runners on, maybe score a run or two, uh, roll back to the top of the order, they'd be in pretty good shape. Well, what but, they uh, got to try to do is get somehow, get some of these guys on, and yeah. Wagner would be eliminated. You would think that the bullpen pitched yesterday, too. So. Pop up on the infield. Catch is made for the out. Tross has had a tough day today. 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. He's a better hitter than that, though. And, uh, like you said, got to learn to hit that varsity pitching. Well, once again, today, you know, you mentioned the top of the order. You have the three seniors at the top. They went one for nine and uh, struck out four times. So those guys are the ones that got to do it. Yes, they got to go after this Wagner, and um, you're going to score some runs, and Wags did a great job of that. Bill. Nathan's dad, Bill Hendricks, just walked by. Steve goes talking to the uh, home plate umpire. We're not sure what this is all about. He took a shot. Could umpire did? Yep. Dan Miller was uh, quite a ball player in his day, Chris. Good pitcher. Two out. In, uh, East Shore League. He listed him as from him and he and his partner are from Fond du Lac, but I think he originally is uh, from Ho uh, New Holstein, I think. And there's a base runner. Ryan Trosh showing good patience, reaching, brings up Bennett Becker. Mentioned Bennett has a hit. He's also got the only RBI for North. Drove that run in with a base hit to left. Back in the second inning. hard right to the third base when he scoops it. Oh. And just missing the double play was Preble. Becker hit the ball hard again. The interesting, no ex what do you have him for now? He's gotta be in the 90s, you'd think. If he's got 99, he can go one more batter and actually exceed Seven, that 100 four, mark. Nine, 94. Okay. The one thing that uh, Wagner has slowed down in the latter part of the game, Chris, is uh, through the last three innings, he's only had one strikeout. Ball is behind home plate. And the catcher, Tosic makes the catch, and that's the ball game. Well, that's why they're fourth in state, Marty. Yeah, they uh, look very good. He ended okay. up with six runs, including a home run by Max Wagner, their uh, winning pitcher. Wagner went all seven innings, had some pitches to spare at the end, and uh, wound up winning the ball game. Thank the crew for their fine work and the director, Chris uh, Scott Miloff, and for my partner, Chris Wright. I'm Mike Martin saying thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you down the road, which will be next Tuesday when North plays South.